I'm Mohammed Shafiq. The purpose of coming to Detroit was to learn more about Muslims in the US and why the UK could learn any lessons about integration and living in the West. Salam al Mariadi, I am the Executive Director of the Muslim Public Affairs Council. There is more integration uh, because of professional skills, level of prof professional abilities, um, and the fact that many of those doctors and engineers and people with money uh, who left the Muslim world uh, opted to come to America because they found much more opportunity here. According to the Big Bang Theory, it started, so it was nothing. There was nothing in Education started. is the ultimate goal for everyone. Everybody has to go to university, everybody has to have an education. If you want to succeed and you want to live the American dream, you have to have an education. In contrast to the UK, there isn't that same drive to push people towards a university education. And maybe as Muslims, we've got to realize the benefits of education, that if we want to change our, our economic position in British society and our intellectual or intelligence in our communities, then the, the, the key to that is education. My name is uh, Mohammed Rababi, owner and operator of Barry and Sons Islamic Slaughterhouse. We decided to go Barry's and Sons, which is the largest Islamic slaughterhouse in, in Northeast America. I was fascinated by this place. The fact that it was the only Islamic slaughterhouse in the Northeast, that, that amazed me. Because in the UK we had we had these slaughterhouses more or less every every town. Uh, I was amazed at how cold it was, but I was amazed by the fact that these people were as passionate about being American and about their lifestyle, and that they didn't want anybody to come in and try to change that. I'm one of those people that are more patriotic, and I worry more about what's going to happen to this country just because I live in it, and I don't plan on leaving it. And my children live here, and they're going to grow up here, and they're going to have jobs here and families here. So now I worry about the next SOB that's going to come do something irrational, crazy, that yeah. might affect my family, yeah. you know, in a school, wherever it may be, that might affect my family. So, so of course, I'm not for it. Definitely not for it. But what, what effect do, does those lunatics have? On, 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 huge effect on, on Muslims. A huge your, effect. Your they they community. they ruin the Muslim reputation. They they make us look like barbarians, like animals, and that's not the way our religion is portrayed. We caught up with Musa and Sura, who from the Muslim Youth Association in Dearborn. You know, I think uh, we live in a great country, a uh, great society. Um, at times, it is difficult, though. Uh, there's challenges that you do face. But then. There are the things that happen here and there that you kind of say, you know, why do I live here? <laughs> Just because you get so upset sometimes with the way things happen and how you can't uh, always change them or always fix them or um, have your word. I'm Mohammed. Uh, my own personal view is that in in in, in England, Muslims, or should I say the UK, uh, in Muslims are afraid to talk honestly about the issues because of fear of being labeled an extremist or fanatic or terrorist. Is it the same here in the UK, uh, in the US? Yeah, very true. I mean, if you were to go into the highest population of Muslims in the country, which is in Dearborn, and uh, try to sit there in the streets and ask people for their opinions or views on what's going on, you know, they'll be too afraid to respond. No, but you won't get any answers. We share the same passion about the double standards that are applying in foreign policy, both in the US and the UK. But I think there's a fear element, whereas in the UK we're very open about foreign policy and opposing the government. In the US, there's a sense that it's something they don't talk as much about as we do in the UK. We went to Wayne State University where we listened to 786 one of the biggest Muslim bands in the world. It's 
a little bit more closeted here just because the community is a little bit more brand new in the United States. But uh, I think that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to fight that trend and kind of bring the balance and moderation back into Islam on the campuses as well as just everywhere else. Do you, can you ever imagine in the United States American citizens ever doing what the British Muslims did last year in, in, in the bombings? You're saying an American-born citizen doing something like that in the United States of America? Oh, of course, without a doubt. I mean, you know, you don't see as much in public um, the amount of anger that has been channeled in the British community, just because, like I said before, it's a brand new community here. But if we don't work hard enough to protect the indigenous Muslims here and, um, you know, uh, use our talents in a positive manner, I think that people will, like, like you said, they'll uh, use their basic instincts and they'll try to do those types of things. At the fundraiser dinner, we, we listened to Leroy Bakker, who's the sheriff of the county of Los Angeles. I found him fascinating that he was so uh, positive about Muslims in the US, and he was making such an effort to talk about the positive contribution Muslims were making. And the contrast with the UK authorities, police authorities, people like Commissioner Blair or Akpour, and police, uh, police officers, senior police officers in the UK who see Muslims as a threat. He was a breath of fresh air. And um, what are your general views about Muslims in the US? Do you see them as a threat? Uh, no, I don't see the Muslim Americans as a threat. Uh, why? Because Muslim Americans come to the United States, as we have seen here in uh, Detroit, Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, Michigan, to find uh, a better life, to find a good life, to be able to fulfill their dreams as doctors, businessmen, store owners, and workers, particularly in the automob automotive industry. Uh, and my uh, awareness of the Muslim American society is that uh, they have a great degree of love and respect for the United States and uh, they're Americans. I think there are massive things that we can learn about integration, about being patriotic, taking a keen interest in homeland security, that the UK is our home, it's our nation, it's our country, and we have a moral and religious duty to protect our nation. And I, that was one of the lasting memories I'll have of, of all the talks I had with Muslims here is how important they feel it was to defend the United States and protect it, the country from potential t terrorist attacks and I, and I suppose in the UK if the, that's one of the lasting things we can do is to make Muslims more aware that homeland security and protecting Britain from terrorists is, is, is a cause that we have to take up.